Hello, uh, my name is Charlene Garcia Sims and I'm the genealogy and special collections librarian here at Rawlings Library. And in recognition of a Pueblo City Council proclamation making Hispanic Heritage Month from September 16th to October 15th, I will be presenting a fun program uh, about our mestizaje and uh, we will be uh, looking at the food exchanges between Mexico and Europe in the 16th century. Uh, the presentation is called Chocolate and Chilies, Beets and Broccoli, The Grand Food Exchange. And um, I'll note something before I get started. Indigenous people had been in the Americas for thousands of years before Europeans arrived and developed and had developed great civilizations. But it was a new world to the Europeans and thus indicated as such in this presentation. A cornucopia of new foods. A lot of the foods we take for granted weren't even known to the Europeans or indigenous people of the Americas until contact was made between the two. A whole cornucopia of new foods was introduced to the explorers and the indigenous people and distributed around the world. Most of the exchanges were good and some weren't. The arrival of Europeans wasn't good for indigenous people either, but that side of history comes with another presentation. This presentation is about what we all like, food. What will we do without chocolate? Before this exchange, there were no oranges in Florida, no bananas in Ecuador, no paprika in Hungary, no tomatoes in Italy, no coffee in Colombia, no pineapples in Hawaii, no rubber trees in Africa, no cattle in Texas, no donkeys in Mexico, no chili peppers in Thailand and India, and there was no chocolate in Switzerland. Can you imagine that? And here's a little history of chocolate. Chocolate has a 4,000 year history beginning in present day Mexico, also known as Mesoamerica. The Olmecs are credited for finding the first cacao plants. They were the earliest civilization there and they turned the cacao plant into chocolate to drink during rituals and ceremonies and also used it as medicine. And you can see a depiction of them in the upper uh, left hand corner. Centuries later, the Mayans made a chocolate drink brew made of roasted and ground cacao seeds and called it chocolate and that's not a good pronunciation, but nevertheless, the spelling is correct, meaning bitter, bitter water. And there's a discrepancy of whether this was um, a Mayan word or Aztec word, but I found that it was mostly, um, it seemed like it was an, a Mayan, a Mayan origin. By the 15th century, the Aztecs used coca beans as currency. They brought it, they thought it was a gift from the god Quetzalcoatl, and also drank it as a beverage. After the Spanish conquered the Aztecs in Tenochtitlan, Mexico City in 1521, legend has it that Hernán Cortés took chocolate to Spain around 1528 by introducing cocoa seeds. Soon it was made into a drink with sugar and honey to sweeten the bitter twice. In Mexico, it was very, very, very bitter. Chocolate was kept a secret by the Spanish for almost 100 years. Once it reached France, cacao plantations started and were grown where cacao grew best. When you give chocolate as a gift, remember that chocolate has a long history. We can give it a little thought as we slowly unwrap those little uh, cell phone wrappers or whatever in anticipation of something scrumptious hitting our taste buds soon. Yummy. More um, information about the food from the New World and the Old World. In the New World uh, was found uh, corn, chili, tomatoes, chili peppers, squash, zucchini, beans, avocado, Potato, remember potato, I'll be talking about that in a minute. Pumpkin, sweet potato. And from the old world, Europe, beets, broccoli, carrots, eggplant, lettuce, okra and cabbage, onions, peas, radishes, garlic, yams, and olives. It seems like the stuff from the old world was a lot more boring. From the new world came peanuts and cashews, sunflower, cocoa, pecans, amaranth, quinoa. And uh, this is, uh, these are amaranth um, plants and uh, you can see what uh, what they turn into on, on, on the bottom when you when you cook them. And both amaranth and quinoa are very, very healthy. From the old world came coffee and what we would do with Starb without Starbucks. Tea, wheat, and uh, keep um, in mind where wheat came from, the old world. Almonds, sugarcane, rice, and hemp. As I stated earlier, indigenous people have been in the Americas for thousands of years before Europeans arrived and developed great civilization but it was a new world to the Europeans. And from the new world came a turkey, bison, buffalo, deer, and ducks. Actually, the uh, turkey came from, from the new world and was taken uh, back to the old world and domesticated. And so people think that the turkey um, originally was from the old world. From the old world, we had honeybees, very, very important, uh, goats, 
geese, horses, chickens, hogs, cattle. Um, and uh, when I talk about cattle, uh, beef, you know, here we have, I think it's a Big Mac. So you can't ha couldn't have a Big Mac without uh, representation from the old world, but you had to have the potatoes from, from the new world. So without the exchange, we wouldn't be able to have a, order a Big Mac and fries. And I think I have uh, the horse on here twice. Uh, it was very important, very important, especially for the indigenous people once the horse uh, was introduced. Uh, more food. We couldn't do a fruit plate without the combination because from the new world, we have blueberries, black raspberries, guava, jicama, cranberries, papaya, and pineapple. From the old world came uh, mango, pear, cantaloupe, watermelon, bananas, kiwi, apples, lemons, and oranges. And I just had a mango last night. Oh my gosh. I love them. I'm so glad that we got them from the old world. Spices and other goodies. Uh, spices from the old world, allspice, vanilla, prickly pear, cactus, and chocolate. I'm just obsessed with chocolate. Uh, spices from the old world, uh, cinnamon, cloves, oregano, ginger, parsley, black pepper, basil, sage, thyme, coriander, dill, and mint. I, I, I think my favorite here would be cinnamon. The Aztec markets held their uh, Tianguis markets, that uh, Aztec word for markets, in Tenochtitlan, you know, Mexico City, every five days selling everything from food and medicines to ornaments, tiles, um, and, and woods, uh, so similar to our farmers markets today. But these were big, huge. And here's a, a depiction of an, of an Aztec market by artist Stephen Lucero from, um, from Denver. And uh, just look at all of those peppers. And the dress, the dress that they, that they wore was really beautiful. There's a pyramid in the back. And this is another um, depiction of an Aztec market by artist Stephen Lucero when they had an Aztec exhibit in Denver in 1993. And it's just, just beautiful and all that food. And this is from one of the codices. I'm not sure which one, but it's uh, showing Aztec men enjoying a meal. They look very happy. Corn tortillas came from the Americas and wheat tortillas came uh, from, from, from Europe. So for the corn tortillas, you, you have to have the corn from Mexico. And for the wheat tortillas, you had to have the wheat from, uh, from Europe. And uh, when you see the wheat tortilla there, those little brown circles, uh, I grew up with, with them. This is the only way that we liked tortillas when they were just a little singed. And in Spanish, we used to call them chamuscada. And uh, you cannot make tortillas without singeing them. If you do, they're not tortillas. Uh, great exchanges, um, chili peppers and livened Italian sauces and flavored Indian curries. Paprika became a hallmark of Hungarian stews. And these came from, you know, from the old world, from the Americas. Tomatoes, not until the opening of the new world could Italian chefs flavor pasta, their mainstay with sauces. From apples of love, you know, which tomatoes are considered. Can you imagine uh, spaghetti without some kind of a tomato sauce or even even pizza? Uh, more food trivia here. Uh, she, sheep thrived in the highlands, notably in Peru, where flocks arrived in the 1520s. Half a century later, some 70 wool mills had opened there. And a lot of the sheep came from the Basque country in northern Spain, and a lot of my my ancestors were, were Basque, and and um, they were they they raised sheep. Uh, some of these people, like my Archuleta Archuleta relatives, they were Basque, and they were the ones that um, raised the sheep. Uh, peanuts uh, from the new, uh, peanuts became popular in Africa and Asia. Vegetarian Buddhists and Hindus in India, Sri Lanka, and China embraced peanuts for both protein. And, um, and culinary diversity. And I think I say new world there, but I think they came from the old world. Sorry about that. Uh, American food for all. Out of the myriad crops of the Americas too, corn and potatoes spread so widely that they became staples of human survival. Potatoes reached Ireland in the 16th century. The once despised tubers helped feed the Irish and later other Northern Europeans from recurring famine. Corn was adopted by Europeans for fodder as well as food because almost any domesticated animal could eat it. Corn boosted Europe's supply of meat and, and dairy products. And um, in, in the Americas, uh, corn was used for many things. I know I grew up uh, with what we call chicos. They were roasted in adobe ovens and then cooked with beans or just in stews. And so corn uh, grows almost anywhere and um, is a very important um, staple. This is a painting by Diego Rivera. 
Old World, a hemisphere of healers, armed with thousands of medicinal plants eagerly sought by explorers to supplement Europe's pharmacies, indigenous doctors fought goiter, headaches, constipation, and other illnesses. Quinine derived from proven embark East malaria, peacock from Amazonian root cured, and mimic dysentery. This is a hard word to pronounce. Today, American herbs enhance some 500 prescription drugs. And then the obsidian blade, you know, up on the right-hand corner, um, it was it was so sharp. Um, the the blades used by Aztec surgeons rivaled even modern steel for precise incisions. The Spanish conquistadores preferred Aztec healers to their Spanish bar barber surgeons. A word about Navajo uh, Navajo bread is it indigenous or Navajo or not? The Navajo word for fry bread is banik aha. Puffed circles of white wheat flour dough, deep fried in lard, served with powdered sugar or honey. But all this, all this, uh, you know, the, the white flour came from Europe, uh, the lard, the sugar, the honey. So the origin is obscure, and it probably started when the, uh, as a Navajo invention from rations given during the four-year incarceration at Fort Sumner in New, in, New in New Mexico called Bosque Redondo, started in 1854. And this is a really was a terrible time for the Navajos. It was their trail of tears, known as the 350 mile long walk from their lands to Bosque Redondo in southeastern New Mexico. The one thing for sure about Navajo bread is there is absolutely nothing negative about it, not its ingredients, technique, or the cooking vessel. And, and now when we go to state fairs or everything, or other you know uh, festivals, a refinement of Navajo bread is the Navajo taco. But is it Navajo? No, I don't think so. Today, it is a staple for feasts. In some places, it is made daily and served with almost every meal. It has become so synonymous with Native Americans that even many Native peoples believe it's an Indian tradition. But when you start thinking of where the ingredients came from, it is not. A combination plate. Let's see what a combination plate takes. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's a... Uh, uh, Imagine a chicken enchilada, smothered pork burrito with avocado and sour cream, beef taco, rice, beans, potatoes, and sopapillas. Well, if we didn't have this um, this food exchange, we couldn't have a combination plate because from the new world came the corn tortilla, the chili, the avocado, the tomato, the beans, and the potatoes. From the old world came the chicken, the cheese, flour and oil, flour tortilla, pork, sour cream, beef, lettuce, uh, the honeybee for the sopapilla, and, um, and rice. So in conclusion, we cannot have a Mexican food combination plate without these exchanges from the new world to the old world, from the old world to the new world. Wouldn't that be bland? Think about it. Thank you very much. And I hope you have fun with this and, uh, and, and discuss them at, at, your, at your many, many meals together.